UTMC. A few weeks ago, we talked about when to keep kids home from school because of illness. Tonight, we're talking specifically about pink eye and eye infections. What do we need to know, Dr. Chris Brickman, about a child with pink eyes? Ooh, the scourge of pink eye. It is the one thing that sends school nurses scrambling and teachers, you know, off 20 feet from the kid. Pink eye, way overblown, out of proportion. For some reason, we've... Uh, come to address that as the scourge of any kid who shows up at school with one of their eyes pink. What people need to understand is they're commonly not an infection. You know, this is, in other words, not an infection that they're going to spread to somebody else. The pink eye, for the most part, is usually an allergic problem or it's a viral type problem. Very rarely is this actually a bacterial problem that you're going to spread from one kid to the next, which is truly what we consider pink eye to be this bacterial infection. So, unfortunately, it's been blown way out of proportion. A kid with a pink eye typically is really not that contagious. And, and again, if they have secretions, if you've got this pure which is a sort of pus-like material coming out of the eye. Clearly in that situation, you know, you need to keep the kid out of an environment where we're going to be exposed to a lot of others, but that really tends to be the minority of the cases. So it sounds like pink eye is a particular affliction, but it looks like other things. And that's exactly what I'm getting at. You know, the old days of pink eye, or at least what we considered pink eye in medicine, is the bacterial infection of the eye that needed these antibiotics to get rid of it. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, Almost any eye that looks red, you know, is not the pink eye, which is that bad infection that we're associated with and that commonly school nurses associate with a kid that's contagious and can get all these other people infected. That is very, very rare. They're really not that contagious. If, you, if the kid just simply avoids touching his eye and then touching somebody else, mm -hmm. they're not going to give it to anybody else, and there's no reason that they can't go to school. So, But the majority of the time, they're all self-limiting, which means no treatment at all. They'll go away on their own, the vast majority. Really? Because so many parents are in a hurry to go find something to fix it. Yeah, unfortunately, that's kind of the big fallacy of pink eye is everybody thinks that it needs this emergent treatment, you know, mm -hmm. right away, and most of the time, like I said, it will go away by itself. It's, like I said, commonly an allergic type thing, and if you got a kid that's had allergy problems, and it's involving both eyes, and that, that is where it's kind of a key. If you find that you've got pink eye and it's in both eyes, that's almost invariably a, an allergic problem or it could be a viral problem. It's almost never a bacterial problem. If it's an isolated one eye and it's real thick and goopy material coming out of that, that becomes a little more concerning. So that's sort of what we want parents to watch for, school nurses to watch for, not just a kid that has red eyes. Okay. It sounds like this is another case where hand washing, always a good idea. Hand washing <laughs> is great. Pretty much takes care of the whole problem. All yeah. right. Thank you so much, Dr. Chris Brickman here at UTMC with some advice on pink eye. That's tonight's talk back.